Once upon a time, there were two giants. One, two. One had long golden hair and sucked his thumb. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Tap and I'll visit you, suck a thumb. Don't worry, I have a good mind to fix that great northern oaf once and for all as he filled the pastry with stones, rusty nails, and snooker balls. The giant had smelt the pastry cooking and she placed a piping hot pie in front of him. He picked up the pie and took a bite. For the rest of his days, the toothless giant could only eat soft foods. He gradually got weaker and smaller until he almost disappeared. The Dumbo. One evening, long ago, a woodcutter sat warming his hands by the evening fire. What a pity we have no children. How quiet life is on our own. Still, I suppose it's not to be, his wife said, putting out the empty milk bottles on the doorstep. Good evening, said a little voice from the step. Mystified, the woman peered down into the gloom, and there was a tiny, perfectly formed little fellow smiling up at her. I used to be a giant. Be by fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Will you adopt me? I've got all the papers. Of course we will. I'll see social services in the morning. And the delighted couple took him in and popped him into his bed. Because he was so small, they called him Tom Thumb. But considering he was once a giant, he was very intelligent indeed. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind these bones to make my bread. His father wanted someone to lead his woodcart back and forth and thought of employing a lad. Don't worry about that. Leave it all to me, said Tom, scrambling up the horse's tail and climbing into the animal's ear. I shall say, Tom Bultinskin, if I want you to turn one way, and Rumbleton Tot, if I want you to turn the other. Left and right will do me, replied the old horse. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, nor an old horse. Now, as he was on his way to the woods, two rogues watched as the cart and horse seemed to travel with no one in command. When they arrived, they saw Tom Thumb climb out of the horse's ear. Would you credit it now? Think what we could do with a wee man. Well, we could eat him for a start, said the greedy wolf. No, you eat it. Just think how many pockets he could pick or doors he could slip under. Oh, lot of doors, inquired the wolf as they approached the little fellow. Excuse me now, little fellow, but we're lost. And seeing how well you directed the horse, could you show us the way to the crossroads? Oh, aye, said the unsuspecting Tom. But a little way down the road, Tom noticed a poster nailed to a tree. Wanted, it said. But the wolf and the fox were too busy chatting to notice. Tom was scared. Can you let me do in a minute? Show us the crossroads. The moment he was on the ground, he made a dash for a mouse hole. 
How about that? Said the wolf, poking the hole with a stick. This is gonna take some thought. Shh, whispered the fox. We'll hide in here until he comes out. And so they waited by the hole until they saw a little face peep out. Tom Thumb was keen to get home to watch our neighbours. Gotcha, they said, as they both pounced on him at once. Now, then, you're coming with us. <laughs> no fancy business. For reasons beyond comprehension, they took him to the vicarage, an establishment they had raided on 17 occasions in the last fortnight. Yet again, it was the vicar's wife's meat pies that drew them like bees to honey. You get under the door, whispered the fox, and pass the pies out through the window, or else you'll never see your mother or neighbours again. Eyes were on a windowsill, so Tom Thumb scrambled up to the window latch and opened it. These pies are too heavy for me. Shush, eat it. You'll wake the whole house. Do you want any cakes while I'm at it? Quiet, you little pest. But it was too late. The kitchen door opened and in rushed the vicar's wife, brandishing a rolling pin. Tom slipped under a crusty pie lid. The wolf grabbed the pie, swallowing it whole as the two made their escape. Eventually, they slumped under a tree. Soon they were both asleep. Yours, Tom looks a disgrace. You should see a doctor. Came a voice from the wolf's tummy. Who's that? Who is that? Groaned the wolf sleepily. Not me, you idiot, replied the fox. You got more chicken bones in here than a witch doctor. Go back to sleep, will you? But it was too late. The bloated wolf was snoring contentedly. Meanwhile, Tom's parents had been out searching for him since nightfall. Tom? Tom, Tom? Over here, came a little voice. Tom's father pointed his torch and picked up the wolf in the beam. Or what are you doing in there? I've been an horse's here, a master's hole, and now I'm in wolf's stomach. I'd like to be back home in bed. <laughs> as his father cut open the sleeping wolf's tummy, released Tom and set off home. In the morning, the fox called an ambulance, which took the wolf to the local casualty department 600 miles away, where he waited on a trolley for three days. Oh, you'll be hearing from my solicitor. He told the trust manager. Like every good little boy, Tom ate his greens and grew back to be a giant. <laughs> <laughs>